everybody to Eastridge. We are so excited you've taken time to join us this weekend. My name is Josh. I'm the youth and young adults pastor here at Eastridge Church. And you are in for a treat. This weekend is going to be incredible. Pastor Steve is going to be preaching and continuing our series. You're absolutely going to love it. We're going to have some time to worship. And we are going to be taking communion together today. So we'd encourage you, if you take a moment right now, go ahead and grab uh, some of the elements, whether whatever you might have for, for bread and for juice. We'd love for you to prepare yourself to be able to participate as we get ready to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. But we got a lot of great things we want to make sure that you don't miss out on. First of all, we would love for you to take a moment right now and check in. There's going to be a little button that comes sliding down into your chat. We'd love for you to just take about 30 seconds and check in with us. This is just a simple way, not only for you to let us know that you're joining us, but it helps us better connect with you, better serve you, and help you figure out how to get better connected here at East Ridge Church. And so just take a few moments. If you're a guest, this is a very important thing. This really helps us be able to really welcome you and roll out the red carpet and welcome you here to the East Ridge family. So take 30 seconds, check in with us. You're not going to regret it. Uh, we got a lot of great things coming up that you are going to want to make sure you don't miss. First of all, uh, just as a good PSA for everyone watching, Valentine's Day is upon us. And if you haven't made plans already, it might be a little too late for you at this point, but we wanna make sure that you're well taken care of. So uh, on Valentine's Day, if you don't have plans already, uh, at 6.30 p.m., we are going to be having an incredible paint and mix. Dan and Rebecca are gonna be leading a phenomenal night, not only for you to get some painting lessons, uh, but for you and your spouse to have a great time doing an activity together. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So if you have I haven't ever done a painting class with Dan and Rebecca. I'm telling you, I've done it. It is a blast. I don't know if I, I laughed harder or, or what, but I just remember having a phenomenal time. Dan always dresses up as Bob Ross. It's a great time. So make sure uh, that you go online. It is all free. It is completely free, but it is online and you do need some supplies. Obviously, we're going to be painting on a canvas. You're going to need some paint. Maybe you need to borrow your kids, you know, watercolors. I don't know what it might be for you, but make sure you get all those supplies ready for our paint and mix. All the information can be found at eastridgetoday.com. If you are new to Eastridge or maybe you've been a part of Eastridge for any period of time and are still looking for kind of what the next step for you is, maybe maybe you've made a decision to follow Jesus, you're wondering what's my next step, maybe you've been attending but you're wanting to get more plugged in, the next thing for you is to attend our next class. It's completely designed to help you figure out exactly that, what's next for you. And on February 28th, we have another next class that's happening at 2 p.m at our Issaquah location. And this is a phenomenal opportunity for you to do exactly what we're talking about, figure out what your next step is. And so you get to hear not only about what we believe, but figure out where you can get involved in serving and what the heartbeat of Eastridge Church is all about. So February 28th, again, you can RSVP for that class at eastridgetoday.com, get all the information, but it's gonna be a great pathway and opportunity for you. And one thing that we are really excited about here at Eastridge is our Inspire Week. And this is always a highlight of the year in the life of our church. We set aside a few days in the month of March every year to gather together as a church family, to worship together, to pray together, uh, to have some people speak into the life of our church about the, the vision, the direction, and the dreams, not just for the now, but for the future of what God has for our church. And so we want you to mark your calendars because we got a couple things going on in March that are gonna be phenomenal. Starting on March 7th, we kick off our Inspire week with a worship night. It's a Sunday night and you're, these are moments that we are always looking back on saying, man, that was a highlight. That was incredible. So make sure you join us for the kickoff that week with our worship night. And then that Wednesday night is always a special night on March 10th as we gather together as the church family, multi-generational to have a night where we are exactly the name of the conference. We are inspired by the dreams and the vision that God has for our future. And then on Thursday, this is the only thing you need to worry about RSV peeing for because on Thursday, March 11th is our one day conference. And this year it's a little shorter. It normally is a full day this year. It's a half day, but we're going to have some phenomenal pastors and business leaders from around the area that are going to be coming to pour specifically into your life. It's going to be uh, one of those can't miss moments. So make sure you RSVP for your spot because space is limited. We want to make sure that you get your spot 
reserved. And then we always end with that following weekend with our Vision and Faith Weekend, where we come together, we bring our best gift, and we fuel the ministry of the future, what God is gonna do through Eastridge Church. Man, I don't know about you, but listen to everything that's going on. I'm excited. I'm ready for what's coming up. And so today is gonna be a phenomenal service. We get to kick things off with worship. And so I'm gonna invite you, no matter where you may be, to go ahead and crank up the volume on your device, on your television. Stand up on your feet. Man, prepare not only your heart, but let's prepare our posture today to enter in to God's presence. So let's worship together, church family. Silence is the end. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxieties and let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are, we claim your victory.
step into what he has for us today. Declare his goodness. We need you, God. We worship you, Lord. Breath of God, fan us in. 
Amen. Amen. What a wonderful Savior we have. I love as we're singing those words, just reminded of the beauty and the power that's found in Jesus and what he has done for us. And we're gonna take a moment together right now and we're gonna celebrate communion. And so uh, if you're at home and you've got some elements prepared, go ahead and grab those right now. Or maybe you need to run into the kitchen and grab something real quick. But um, we are gonna take a moment to celebrate who Jesus is and what he has done for us. And when we hold these emblems in our hand, this is so much more than just a religious routine or ritual. But literally what we have in our hand right here is a picture of the power of the gospel. That there is a God who loves us so much, not just collectively, but personally, individually. There is a God who loves you so much that he would get up out of heaven. He would come and he would live a sinless, perfect life on the face of this earth that he would be lied about, that he would be convicted of crimes that he didn't commit, that he would die a death that he didn't deserve, all so that he could pay the price that you and I deserve because of our sin and our failure. But the beautiful thing is because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, there's an exchange that takes place. And what Jesus offers every single one of us today is this exchange where he takes our brokenness and he gives us his wholeness, where he takes our imperfections and he gives us his perfection, where he takes our failure and he gives us his righteousness, his right standing, his eternal life with the Father in heaven. That's what's available to all of us today, not because we earned it or deserved it, but simply because of what Jesus has done for us. This moment where Jesus is going to break bread with his disciples in the upper room, we find uh, an account of it in 1 Corinthians as the apostle Paul retells the story that was told to him. He says that on the night that Jesus would be betrayed, they took bread and he broke it. He said, this bread represents my body that will be broken for you. We do this often to remember me. He says, likewise, that Jesus took a cup he says, this cup represents a new covenant in my blood, a new way to be made right with God. It was no longer gonna be about uh, the animal sacrificial system. Jesus would be the final sacrifice once for all humanity, for anyone that would call on the name of Jesus. And he says, do this often to remember me. So today, church, we are gonna do just that. We are gonna take a moment to pause, to reflect, to remember, and to partake of the Lord's Supper. So I'm gonna pray. And then we're gonna go ahead and take these emblems together. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Jesus, we are so grateful today for your grace and your mercy. God, we are so grateful that you loved us enough that you came and you stood in our place and you took upon yourself a punishment that you did not deserve, but you did it because you loved us. God, thank you that today we can be forgiven. God, that we can be made whole, that we can be made righteous, whether this is our, our first time uh, believing in you, whether we still got questions or whether we've grown up in church our whole life. God, there is a fresh revelation of your grace and your love and your mercy available to each and every one of us right now. And God, I pray that even in this moment that we would experience the grace of God in a deeper way, in a personal way, in an intimate way. Lord, let us receive and experience your grace today, Jesus. God, we love you, but more importantly, we thank you for the way that you have shown your love to us. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you go ahead and take the bread with me today? Likewise, let's go ahead and take the cup together as well. Amen. Man, I'm so grateful for what Jesus has done for us. And so appreciative of the opportunity we have to gather together, to worship, to sing of his goodness and his grace and to open our hearts to receive everything that he has for us today. Just as we've sung together, and we've taken communion together, you're in store for a phenomenal message. It's gonna stir your heart, it's gonna challenge you. We'd encourage you, grab your Bible, grab your journal, lean in, maybe even share this message. Send it out to a friend, shoot them a text message, or maybe even post it on your social page right now and get the word out because I know you got people in your sphere of influence who would benefit from hearing this message. So let's lean in and let's have a great day, church. Welcome to Eastridge. Whether you're joining in person or online, we're so glad that you're here. Take a moment to check in with us. 
It's a great way to let us know that you're here and to find out more about what's going on at Eastridge Church. If you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, we encourage you to join us at the Eastridge online platform. Even if you're watching through a smart TV, you can join the conversation on the online platform through a second device. There, you can chat with a pastor, request prayer, or easily give online with the click of a button. You can even set up recurring giving so that you never miss out on the opportunity to be a blessing to the work of God through Eastridge Church. If you are in the room, you can give through the Eastridge app at eastridgetoday.com slash give or in the buckets in the back. We encourage you to stay up to date with everything that's happening at Eastridge through social media or eastridgetoday.com. And once again, thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody. So good to see you today. Thank you for coming, spending part of your weekend with us. What an important time to just really open our hearts in a spirit of worship, communion, and just the relationship together. What an amazing thing. I want to welcome all of you in West Seattle. Big shout out to you. Thank you for being with us. And all of you who are online, no matter if you're in your home or out on the road somewhere, even to the far corners of the earth, we're so glad you're here and sharing together as part of this great family that we call Eastridge. So we're really glad that you're here. And those of you online, I'd love to have you share this message today because I believe you're going to get some kingdom principles that are going to be so practical and so real. We're going to be talking about the aspects. We're studying the book of Acts just line by line. And today we're coming into an amazing story about the power of legacy, the power of vision, and the power of generosity all coming together to make a world changer. And I believe that that's what God wants to do in this house together today and throughout the family of Eastridge. I believe God's going to do something great in your life. I want you to expect, I want you to believe that today is your day and that there's a word that is literally going to unlock and unleash some new power and some new anointing in your life that you could really be everything God has ordained for you to be. So I'm pretty fired up about being able to preach to you today. So let's really get our hearts ready. But before we get to the word, I want to talk to you today about another level of worship, and that is even what we're going to be talking about in this sermon, but giving God our tithe and giving God our love offerings, that we would just express our heart to the Lord, show him our love, show him our faithfulness, show him even our obedience and our vision, all wrapped in this amazing area of being faithful to give tithes and offerings unto the Lord. And so today, just a quick scripture. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. Each man should give what he's decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly nor under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And today we're going to find this amazing scripture being fulfilled. The next line says this, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So today I just want to encourage you to be faithful to God, to honor him, and today to sow the seeds that will make a difference not only in your life, but will make a difference in the entire church family and the ministry of the church. And I just want to encourage you today. This is a great, great moment to just turn our hearts and our focus toward the Lord. And so today I encourage you, let's give, let's be strong, let's build God's work and let's open our hearts today to what the key principles are as to how to honor God and build a life of legacy. Would you join me right now? Let's pray together. Lord, I just want to pray over your people today that as we get into your word and even as we're in this moment of just giving our, our generous gifts unto you, God, Lord, may you bless the seeds that are sown today. May they have incredible impact, opening up doors of ministry that we could touch more and more people, whether it be across the street or even across the world. And Lord, I pray even for the heart of the people who are giving today, that there would be great joy, that, Lord, there would just be such an assurance in their hearts, and, Lord, that they would even be able to see the legacy that is being birthed through, through such moments of faith, joy, and obedience. So, God, bless your church, I pray today. Bless your people. And now as we go into the Word of God, just 
really open us up to be able to receive everything that you have, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, those of you watching online, how about sharing this message today and uh, just being a messenger and a missionary of hope and letting other people get in to the great principles of God. Well, if you're with me today, you have your Bibles or you have your devices, we're studying the book of Acts line by line, chapter by chapter. So let's go. Grab it. We're going to go right into the scripture today, and we're going to start in Acts chapter 4, and we're going to look at verse 32 and following. And I want you, as we start to read this scripture, I want you to see how real this is. The early church 2,000 years ago lined in a parallel line with where we are right now in 2021. As we are looking to just build God's work in the midst of adversity, in the midst of trials and tribulation, in the midst of a day of strife and anger and anguish, God has given us something so great and that is the call to be the people of God for such a day such a time as this and to give a different response than we find out on our street today because of the knowledge of God in our heart and the working and the prompting of the Holy Spirit in our soul. So let's go to the word. Here we are, Acts chapter four, verse 32 and following. Here's what it says. All the believers were one in heart and mind. I love that. No one claimed to have any of his possessions that they were his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was with them all. And there were no needy persons among them, for from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them and brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone as they had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold the field that he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. So today, church, I just want us to see that 2,000 years ago, the early church had so many struggles and there were challenges on every front. And yet what God was doing was he was moving so beautifully and powerfully, bringing the people of God together in one heart and in one mind. And then he began to knit them together in a common mission. Wow, that's exactly where we are today, united in heart, in voice, and in mission. It's what God really wants his church to be about, that we would have a heart and a love one for another, and not just for ourselves, but we would have a heart for the people around us, that we would have a heart for our community, that we would have a heart for our nation, that we would believe even for the nations of the world that Christ would become real in people's lives. So I love this. We're right in that groove of the New Testament church. Unity right at the center. So I want to challenge every one of us because in our day and time, one of the lowest areas of... of um, of, of things that are, are most rare in the moment where, where we're in right now is unity and just a place of, of uh, surrendering of the heart, laying down agendas and just allowing God to, is it true or is it not? Just giving God space to work in our lives. And I wanna challenge you right here, young people, young adults, all the way through. I, I, this is really the key to legacy, is to be faithful to God in the difficult moments, to have a heart that leans into God. This is God, what do you wanna do in me? How can I be a part of building your work? What, will, what can I do? God that is going to be pleasing and honoring to you. The early church, they walked in a spirit of grace. They walked in a spirit of, of oneness, a spirit of ministry. They were getting behind their leaders. They understood the significance and the importance of loving their leaders and being faithful. The, the apostles were out preaching the word in the marketplace, declaring Jesus as Lord, and even unveiling the power of the resurrection of Jesus. And every day, God was adding to their numbers those who were being saved. And yet, in the midst of that climate, it was a climate of great challenge and great need. And the people understood what we talk about so often here at Eastridge, this amazing bond, a sacred trust between the people of God and their leaders. 
and the sacred call upon a leader to live strong and to lead strong in the midst of the body. And there's this, this place of coming together for the greater good, laying aside all the things that don't really matter. One of our elders in our church, Glenn Ewing, he always says a simple little phrase, keep the main thing the main thing. And that's what we want to do as we honor God, isn't it? To just say, God, I want to honor you and I want to be faithful to you. In the midst of this moment, we find the Holy Spirit working in people's lives, just like he is right now in 2021. Many of you, this last year, the last, you know, COVID time, some of you have been honoring God. Some of you have been uh, honoring him with your finances. Some of you have had a whole different level of a prayer life in the midst of this environment. And many of you have even stood up to bring encouragement and strength to your leaders. And I want you to know, those are the marks of righteous people. Those are the marks of mature believers. And we find it right here that the believers, no one had to take their resources from them. Nobody had to demand things from them. But instead, the Bible says that as people had resource, they had a heart to give unto the Lord. People that own pieces of land, they own homes. As the Lord would prompt them, they would sell those properties and they would bring the resource. And this even shows their faith and their confidence in their leadership. And the Bible says they laid their resources, their gifts at the feet of the apostles and basically said this, we want to serve God's will. We want to build God's church. So use these resources as, as best can. And the Bible says that the needs were met. It wasn't about distributing money across the board. It was about people of God being prompted to meet the needs of people as they were being unveiled. When people met needs, God would stir, God would touch, and there would become an answer. And I love that because it's right out of other scriptures. God loves a cheerful giver. There's something where legacy gets released in our lives. When we begin to be stewards and we understand like the scripture teaches us that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And we start to see ourselves not as owners, but we see ourselves as stewards. And when we're a steward, God can say, hey, I want you to be a part of this. Hey, you've got the opportunity to be a world changer. Boy, you could really make a difference in this situation. And when we walk in faith and generosity and obedience, I'll tell you what happens. God literally uses us to bring breakthroughs. There's an old saying that if God can get it through you, God will get it to you. I've seen this so many times in my life and in different people's lives. They thrive, they grow, their lives begin to operate in an entirely different level when they understand kingdom love and kingdom generosity. There's a scripture here where it talks about this man named Joseph. He was a Levite. That means means that he would have served as a temple assistant. Now, the Bible says that he was raised, and we understand he was literally even born on the island of Cyprus. And the Bible says that Joseph, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, owned a piece of lamb. And in the moment, the Holy Spirit prompted him and said, Joseph, I want you to sow this seed. I want you to sell this because it's going to help the church. And as as Joseph gave that resource to the church, amazing things began to happen. Not only in the life of the church, but in, in Joseph's life as well. I love the fact that the Bible says that they named him, they changed his name, and they called him Barnabas, which means the son of encouragement. I wanna to talk to you right now for a moment. You know, some of you today, you, you're, you're just going through the motions in your life. You're struggling. Some of you are really battling with self-view. Some even just discouragement and despair, just really feeling like, wow, when will I ever find fulfillment again? When will I ever sense meaning or purpose in my life? I want to just encourage you today. God wants you to walk in such a relationship with him that you are living a dynamite life. You're, you're living a life that is refreshing and empowering to other people. And not only that, but thrills you, gives you something to get up for in the morning because of the goodness of God. You know, what's interesting about this man named Joseph, 
They, the apostles looked at him and they saw his character. They looked and what they saw in him was a spirit of generosity. But it wasn't just generosity. It was love-motivated generosity. It was a man transformed. This was a man who knew Jesus. And I, it doesn't really describe for us all the things that Christ had done in his life, but we know this much. It was just the deepest part of his life to say, I want to be a part of everybody coming to know Christ. And there's nothing that I will withhold from the Lord. And so he generously and graciously gave of himself that the church needs could be met, people's lives could be influenced, and the kingdom would go forward for the glory of God. Here's what I want you to see. He had no idea that when he would make this one faithful decision that it would open up the door for an entirely new opportunity in his life. Some of you feel like you're at a dead end road. I want to challenge you. When you faithfully honor God through your prayers, through your service, through the, all the things we're talking about today, getting behind the church, getting behind leaders in difficult times, and even just joyfully sowing, get ready. Because what God is going to do is he's going to use you. He's, he loves to use people who want to be a part of building the work of God. People who will walk in that spirit of, of love, surrender, and grace. And in the midst of that, you're going to see opportunities that you would have never otherwise seen. Let's take a look at this life of this man named Barnabas. You know where we find him in the book of Acts next? We go from Acts chapter 4, and all of a sudden, Barnabas shows up in Acts chapter 9. What's happening in Acts chapter 9? There's a man named Saul. He is the leading persecutor of the church. He just stands against Jesus to such a degree that he even um, was a part of, of people even being killed simply because they were followers of Jesus. But now we find in Acts chapter 9 that out of his grace and his compassion and his love, even his divine purpose, God is going to have an encounter with this man named Saul on the road to Damascus. He's going to blind his eyes, have a man lead him into the city. And, and then the revelation of the Lord is going to come into Saul's life of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And then Saul is actually going to go from being the leading persecutor of the church to becoming a preacher of the message of Jesus. And he does it on his own for a, quite a, a period of time. And then the Lord prompts him to go to Jerusalem and to start relationship with the other apostles. But you know what the Bible says to us in Acts chapter 9? You might want to turn there with me. In Acts chapter 9, the Bible is speaking to us in verse 26 through 31. The Bible speaks to us about a conflict. And the conflict was that the apostles feared this man. They didn't trust him. They thought this was just a ploy that he was putting on, that he had had such a conversion and that he had come to the Lord. And they saw it as a, a place where he would turn on them and actually use it as a place to destroy those who would follow after Jesus. Let's take a look at verse 26 and following. Speaking of this moment, when he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him, not believing that he was really a disciple. Look at verse 27. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. And he talked and he debated with the Grecian Jews, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers heard of this, they took him down to Caesarea and had him sent off to Tarsus. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. It was strengthened and encouraged in the Holy Spirit, and it grew in numbers, listen to this, living in the fear of the Lord. You know where the breakthrough came from? It was God's will. God had his hand on this man named Saul. It was the Lord that knocked him down on the road to Damascus. It was the Lord that called the man named Ananias to go and lay hands on him. It was the Lord Jesus who revealed himself to Saul, and he became the man that we know as Paul soon to be the greatest church planter and apostle and even author of the New Testament above all others. But what would have happened if he didn't have an opportunity to ever be believed, to ever be received by the key leaders, by the apostles themselves? The apostles were standoffish. They didn't trust him. 
It's interesting, isn't it, that even with the Holy Spirit moving so powerfully in their lives, that, that, that area, the scars of what Saul had brought to the church were so deep that the apostles wouldn't even believe that this man had anything good in his heart and mind. But it was Barnabas, the son of encouragement. Think about that, the encourager. I have to ask you this, who's in your life right now that needs you to stop having such a critical spirit or such a negative worldview or so many negative words coming out of it? And how many of you just need somebody to come alongside of you and to believe in you? How many need somebody who will come and say, you know what, I've seen God's work. I've seen God's hand on your life. And I wanna stand on behalf of what the Lord is about to do next in your life. There's so many amazing miracles that could happen in our church, that could happen in the relationship relationships of your life, if God could find some new Barnabases right here in 2021. You know, we've heard from everybody else, the cynics and the, and the skeptics and, and the people that are seemingly at war on every front. What if we were to have a spirit of encouragement? Is there any men today? What if we were to start to walk and say, God, let my lips be used by you. Lord, let me be a person that really gets behind the church and the leaders and even meet needs in the church. God, let my light shine for the glory of God. In the midst of these lessons comes the multiplying effect of the gospel. You're going to live the most powerful life with the greatest influence beyond what you could ever see in the moment when you just come to this place and say, God, I give everything I have to you. Lord, work in my life. Change. Lord God, knock off the rough edges. Lord God, speak to me. Hold me, Lord God, and just give me fresh direction. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be amazing. Some of you have friends that if you would just speak loving, gracious truth and encouragement into their lives, God could use you to turn situations. You know, if, if you would become uh, what you ought to be, every single one of us ought to love the church. It's right, because the church is the bride of Jesus. And we should stand and we should say, Lord, I love your work. I love your church. I'm going to stand with everything I have to be a part of this church growing stronger and deeper and letting the message go even wider. And I'll tell you what, some of you are business people and some of you um, are, are just really even feeling God challenging you to do more. And you're wondering, well, how do I do more? What should I do? Make it a matter of prayer and say, God, how can my talents and my gifts? You don't have to be a business owner. You can be in any level of your life. You could be a, a university student seeking your future. And if you will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, God's going to add all these other things to you. He's going to open doors. I want you to see the life of Barnabas and what it means to you to be an encourager to be positive, to be filled with faith, and to be a person of action who will not take no for an answer, but will keep reaching and believing for what God has. It's an amazing thing. So we find this amazing breakthrough, and, um, and Barnabas really is the one that opens up the door for the apostle Paul to be able to come in and have relationship with the other apostles, to be trusted, and to be able to really be put into a greater level of influence and leadership than it would have been if he was off on his own. Some of you today, you can add such value into someone else's life. You can bring such blessing into this church family. You could be a world changer if you will make it the priority of your heart. It's not something that happens accidentally, is it? It's what happens through faith. It's what happens through prayer. It's what happens when there's a, a real place of seeking God's heart. And in the midst of that, God's gonna prompt you. It can be just a, a quiet little prompt inside of your soul that you just can't get away from. And God will say, hey, I want you to do this. Hey, you've got the ability to make a difference. Hey, don't wait for everybody else. Be a leader, lead the way. And when other people are, are critical or other people are harsh, out in the marketplace, wherever it could be, even inside of the church, you have a different approach. You have a different voice, united, unified, seeking what God wants to be done, prioritizing the body of Christ and the mission of Jesus above all else. And in the midst of that, God's going to add to you one thing after another. You're going to see the doors of blessing, the doors of opportunity. It doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy or that everything's going to be simple. No, it, it could be extremely demanding in your life, but it will be the most fulfilling thing that you've ever done when you stand strong and you, your greatest heart, your greatest purpose is to meet the needs that God 
God puts in front of you. I think about Tommy Barnett. We love him so much in this church. He's made such a difference and challenged us over and over. I remember him bringing a, a piece of wood and holding it up to us, and he'd written on there a word that, that God had given him over and over in his life. You can do more. You know, that God doesn't bring us to the end of what he can do. When we walk by faith and not by sight, when we sow, when we're loving and generous and leaning into God, get ready, because God will just continue to open a new door. He'll just put more resources in you. He will release you. He will do things beyond what you could ever imagine if you will trust him. I think about even the heart behind Tommy Barnett over and over. Through the years, he would say this. He would say, find a need and fill it. Find a hurt and heal it. That's the key to every ministry, isn't it? Having a heart that says, God, I want to take care of the broken and the hurting. Lord, I, I want to be a part of healing racial hurts and pains. Let my life be a healer and a reconciler. Let me lift people up. Those different areas of even being able to love people who are hurting. You know, hurting people hurt people. It's not an easy thing to put your heart out there and to minister to people who are in difficult places. And often they'll turn on you. Often they'll hurt you. They'll say things. But you know what? The kingdom of God goes forward by people who will trust the Lord. Can I get an amen? And just keep loving, keep speaking hope, keep speaking truth, and you're going to see God do amazing things. They called Barnabas the son of encouragement because that was his character. That was truly who he was. And if you were around him, you were going to have encouragement. You were going to be strengthened. You were going to be challenged. You know, sometimes I think people get the idea that encouragement means that we're affirming things that, that shouldn't be affirmed. No, encouragement is to breathe strength into someone's life. The Bible speaks about how one person will sharpen another like iron sharpens iron. We need people who will speak lovingly the truths of God into our lives. It's one of the real tragedies of the day and time that we're living in is that people feel afraid and limited to be able to even speak what the truth truth is and to be able to really even say there's right and there's wrong but that is the role of the church not to be judgmental not to be a negative but to be lifting and to be continually pointing people to a God that loves them to a God that sees them to a God that cares for them some of you need to hear this right now because you've been feeling like God has overlooked you that God doesn't know where you're at and you feel lonely and you feel broken and you feel like you've made so many mistakes maybe God could never receive you. Today, I stand to speak to you heart to heart that you would know that you are loved by God. You are valued by God. And the greatest demonstration of that value is to be reminded like the apostles preached 2,000 years ago, the resurrection of Jesus. The value of God, his love for you is that he came and he went to a cross and stood on your behalf that if you would just believe, you would receive forgiveness. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever, however broken you are, however far you are, whatever mistakes you've made, God's grace is greater than those things. Today, that's the power of encouragement that comes into our heart through the scriptures and through the knowledge of God. You know, we find in Acts 4, we, we get introduced to this incredible person, Barnabas. And then we find in Acts chapter 9, he encounters uh, Saul and is instrumental in this man being raised up and going forth and fulfilling his destiny. Yeah, I just want to say it again. You have a part in other people's destiny. The seeds that you sow will bring legacy into your kids. You can pray your kids into a different place. You can sow and you can believe and you can make a difference in other people's lives. That's what ministry is all about. The other thing we need to realize is that as we walk in faithfulness, that's where the doors open. You can't wait for the door to open to be faithful. It's the steps of faithfulness that lead to the open doors. Somebody, you need to hear that. Grab it. It's the steps of your faithfulness that lead to the next open door. You know what we find in Acts chapter 11 is that there's a struggle and a need in the land. And in Acts chapter 11, a prophet comes on the scene named Agabus. And we're going to see Agabus in, in uh, Acts chapter 11, and we're going to see him in also Acts chapter 13. But in, in 11... Verse 27 and following, here's what it says. 
During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Agabus stood up and through the Spirit predicted a severe famine would spread throughout the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, each according to his ability, decided to provide help for the brothers living in Judea. And they did this, sending their gifts to the elders by who? Barnabas and Saul. You know, when people see your heart for the church, when people see you working and leaning in, and when they've even tasted and seen your sacrificial generosity, you know what? They're going to want to follow that. They're going to want to be a part of that. You'll be an inspiration. Some of you in, in your lives, as you follow God, you're going to inspire others to do greater works. And you know what? They're going to trust you. You're going to be able to be a place of inspiration and even a place of mentoring because of people being able to see in you that it's not that you live this life that says, do as I say, but instead it's follow me as I follow Christ. And that is the most important thing that we can have in our lives, isn't it? That place of a visible, loving example of just a person who wants to honor God and be faithful. And so I'll, I just want you to see throughout the scripture, this man named Barnabas keeps showing up at key instrumental moments. There's a great famine coming across the entire Roman world and the believers from all different directions, God prompts their hearts. And you know what they say? We wanna give. Even out of our own needs, we wanna give. And who did they trust with those resources? You know. The Bible says, we talked about this last week, that people were coming to the Lord. 3,000 came on the day of Pentecost. Later we find that uh, in Acts chapter 4, that the church had then grown to 5,000, counting just the men. Think about that. The population of Jerusalem wasn't even that much. And already there was just a sweeping move of God with 5,000 men, let alone others, uh, women and children that were coming to the Lord. And it's interesting that we don't find all of these other names being mentioned, do we? But we find a name that keeps popping up. Why? Because of his love, because of his character, because of his loving generosity, because of his care for other people and the willingness and the desire. Let me be the person that makes you everything that God would want you to be. Let me be an assist. Let me help you keep reaching towards God. I want to just say this right now. Right now, I believe this with all my heart, that God is looking for people in 2021 who will rise up and speak and live as light and salt into this generation. It's time to stop the negativity. It's time to stop the same battle that the world has. It's time to draw near to God. It's time to get on our knees. It's time to pray. It's time to welcome the Holy Spirit and spend time in his presence and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is my legacy? What's my role for such a day and such a time as this? Stop waiting for everybody else to do the work of God. Get in. Put your hand on the plow. Don't look back, but just commit yourself to say, you know what? I'm going to live for the glory of God. I'm going to live that God would be able to use me and that I could be a blessing to his church, that I could be a blessing to the people of God. Everything that he's entrusted to me, I'm a steward of, and I'm going to do my very best to honor God from the inside out. As we turn a couple of pages, we're going to get to Acts chapter 13. And in Acts chapter 13, the Bible teaches us that in Antioch, Antioch is up in Syria on the, on the shores of, uh, off of the shores a little bit, but around the, the areas of the Mediterranean Sea as they just come from Jerusalem up to uh, the areas of Syria. And, and Antioch was the first place that followers of Jesus were called Christians or people who were Christ-like, like small Christ. What a great, great, amazing thing, isn't it? That they didn't call themselves that, but they were identified as followers of Jesus, they were identified as Christians. We're living in a day and a time where people are diminishing um, the Christian message. We're, we're seeing things happen all around us where the Bible is, is um, being diminished in culture and these different things. And yet, in the midst of the situation, we need to see how important it is that we sow the seeds of the kingdom of God. In the midst of this, um, there was a prophets. There were prophets and teachers at Antioch. And, um, and the Bible says that while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, 
set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. So after they fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. You know what you have to love here is that we're talking years later now from the time in Acts chapter 9 when when Barnabas went to a man who was on the sidelines, a man that was not respected, he wasn't trusted, and it was Barnabas that brought Saul in and connected him to the leadership and to the body of Christ in Jerusalem. Now they're in Antioch, this incredible hub of Christianity. And Antioch is going to become the center of New Testament missions. And all of the missionary journeys were launched and sent forth. It's one of the things that I love about this church is this church has a heart for mission, whether it's across the street or it's across the world. And we lean into it. And you have been so generous and so prayerful about this. And it's really the heart of God being lived out in our lives. But here you have this amazing picture. I want you to see this church. I want you to see that when you sow to somebody else's blessing, it will never be overlooked in the heart of God. I want you to see that when you sow to someone else's opportunity, you don't have to fight for position. You don't have to struggle, but you just walk in this. Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things are going to be added to you. What we find here is, is Barnabas stood up on behalf of Saul. Ye Years later, they are, they are both leaders in the hub of Christianity, the, the church at Antioch. And you know what the Holy Spirit says? I want these two guys to go and to be the very first missionaries. And the very first missionary journey was that of Paul and Barnabas as the prophets and the church laid their hands on them and prayed for them and sent them out. It's just amazing, isn't it? Listen, it's important how you live your life. It's important. Do you live by faith? Are you looking for opportunities? Are you, is everything about you secular? Is everything about you about your, your um, bank account, your pleasure, your opportunities? Or is it a kingdom mindset? Are you living for the glory of God? Are you sowing toward the, 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 the Lord in ministry? Are you a seeker of God's will being done in your life? Listen, if you are, then you have every right in the world to believe God for greater things because he is the God who sees who hears and who, what does the Bible say in the book of Hebrews? He rewards those who diligently seek him. And Barnabas had a spirit of life, a spirit of encouragement, a spirit of generosity. He lifted everybody's life that God brought across his path. And because of that, God sent him out to do amazing things. Listen, you could do far more than you're doing right now with the spirit of the Lord upon your life. Listen, I'm calling out to some of you. You've been on the sidelines. You put all of your focus on worldly things, and God is trying to get your attention right now. I want to also say this. This is the day we're living in a dark time, and we need unity. Our country needs unity. But you know what? It's not going to happen just through secular channels. It's going to happen because of this. You know what's missing in our world right now is the understanding of the gospel. Is somebody with me? When you understand Jesus, the apostles were out preaching the resurrection. And what was the resurrection? The resurrection teaches us forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ our Lord. And you know, it's interesting because we cannot have wholeness in our lives until there's forgiveness. First, our lives being made right with God, but secondly, where we learn how to forgive others for what has happened in our lives because of their sin. You know, in our country right now, we need to learn the power of forgiveness. Is that true? We need to learn what it is to to give forgiveness and to receive forgiveness. We have to understand that we can't go and just unwind every failure of the past. We have to understand the importance of putting our faith in the Lord and, and calling everyone to bring their needs, to come and bring their hearts and their lives and to surrender themselves to Jesus because Christ is the one that brings freedom. Christ is the one that brings forgiveness. Christ is the one that brings wholeness that no one can take away. That's the power of what it is to surrender your life to Jesus. And I believe believe that today while I'm preaching to you, the Spirit of God is witnessing in so many of your lives. It's time for this change. It's time to open up your heart. It's time to let go of the anxiety and the fear and the anger and even the resentment towards other people and to come fresh to God and allow him to cleanse you and forgive you and bring hope into your life. 
You know, when Paul and Barnabas went on the very first missionary journey, they took a young man named John Mark. And this is the young man that would later uh, be known as one of the apostles or one of the, I should say, the writers of Scripture. He wrote the book of Mark. But what I want you to see is while they were out on their first missionary journey, they looked around and things were getting intense. And Mark disappeared. He was nowhere to be found. He didn't say, hey, I need to go home. He didn't, he didn't speak to them. He just disappeared. How frustrating. Have you ever had somebody in your life when you were in a difficult place and you really needed to be able to count on them? Sometimes it's a mother, a father, a loved one. It could be a boss or it could be an employee. Someone in the body of Christ. And you turn around and they're gone. Nowhere to be found. And you know, Barnabas and Paul continued on that journey, and they really fell into some difficulty. In fact, at one town called Lystra, people picked up rocks and they stoned the Apostle Paul, and they left him thinking that he was dead. Later, years later, when Paul is talking to Barnabas, he says, Barnabas, let's go back, and let's go revisit all the churches that we planted on that first missionary journey. We've been praying for those believers. Let's go back and see them. Let's go and encourage them. And Barnabas was all over that. You can imagine he was all over wanting to go and encourage these people. And he says, you know what? Let's get John. Let's get John Mark and have him go with us. And all of a sudden, it's just a brick wall. And honestly, this is a place in the scripture that I have a hard time understanding what happened here. I have a, I have a disappointment out of all the incredible things that the Apostle Paul did and what he was used to do and plant churches and write the Scripture, he was still a man. He was still a human being with thoughts and feelings and emotions. And you know something? He did something that I will, I'll never forget. He did not have the capacity to give to John Mark the same second chance, at least in that moment, that Barnabas came to his side and stood when he was on the outside. In fact, there became such a dispute that we find in Acts chapter 15 that Paul and Barnabas went separate ways. Can you believe that? They, they couldn't find common ground, and so they went two separate ways. But Barnabas refused to give up on John Mark. And so he tucked him underneath his wing and took him and mentored him and led him in ministry. And Paul grabbed Silas, and they went a different direction. And you know something? God used them both in their different places. But through the mentoring and the love of Barnabas, who would not give up on a man that had ran out on them, a man that had failed them, disappointed them. Have any of you ever had a place of failure in your life? Was there ever a place in fear where you, where you disappeared? Was there someone that you let down? Listen. God is the God who wants to pick you up and do great things in your life. And I want you to see the power of love, the power of generosity, and the power of encouragement. And Barnabas just kept sowing into the life of uh, John Mark. And it's interesting because later, John Mark would be brought into relationship with the apostle Peter. And he became like a right-hand man to Peter and was used mightily of God. As I said, he even wrote the book of Mark and so many different things we could talk about. But you know, in the closing time, we're gonna go another 30 years into the future. How many know the legacy is birthed through time? And we're gonna talk about this now 30 years into the future. And we're gonna find that Paul, 30 years in, in the time from when Barnabas first spoke on behalf of Paul, to the time of the closing of his life. We find it in 2 Timothy. And in 2 Timothy, when Paul is back in Rome in imprisonment and he's going to be martyred in a very short time, he wrote his last book and he, he wrote to 2 Timothy and, and he said, send to me John Mark, send to me Mark. He's useful for me. So all these years, John Mark, because of the mentoring and the love and the investment that Barnabas, the son of encouragement, planted in his life, he was released in ministry, he served with Peter, but he had also shown himself over and over in interactions with Paul that he had become so meaningful to Paul. Think about this, that when Paul knew his life was about to be over, who did he want by his side in his, in his last hours? He wanted John Mark to be with him. Wow, what a legacy. 
What a life. Today, so many of us, I I just want to say this to you. Do not live your reactionary feelings. Do not live your anger, your bitterness. Stop allowing yourself to keep rewinding the same thing and coming to the same conclusion. It's time to allow the Holy Spirit to intersect your heart. It's time to allow the Holy Spirit to bring cleansing into your heart and mind. Your, your hurts, your pains, your disappointments, your anxieties, all these things, they need to be filtrated out. They need to be cleansed by the power of the forgiveness of Jesus and the power of the resurrection. And and the working of the Holy Spirit in you. Today, let God arise. Let miracles come into your life. Let a new beginning turn the page. Let 2021 not be a year of failure, not be a year of criticism, not a year of tearing people down, but let it be your greatest year of ministry. Let it be the greatest year thus far that you have ever served God's church. Is there an amen? Let it be the greatest day that you sow the real seeds that honor the heart of God and bring breakthrough not only into other people's lives, but allow the open doors to come into your life. You want to see fulfillment? You want to see power in your life? It comes right through what we're talking about today. Trusting God, loving his church, and sowing into the lives of the people around you. Listen, I'm going to ask you right now just to bow your heads with me here in West Seattle. Just take a moment personally between you and the Lord. Those of you at home, the same thing. Could be right now God's just speaking to you about getting your heart right with God. Let your attitude be changed. Let a new path come, a new dream, a new way of living your life. I believe God wants to do it. How do you get right with God? You just ask him. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And I pray that you'll be what you were to Barnabas. I pray you'll be what you were to Saul and just turn my life and make me, make me effective and meaningful for the sake of your kingdom. God, Do something new in me. Let me pray with you. Lord, there's many, many people right now. You're putting your hand upon them and you're giving them, dear God, a fresh call upon their lives. Lord God, there's a deep and powerful work of the Holy Spirit. Lord, it's sensed, it's real, it's it's undeniable that God, you're challenging people to lay aside the things of this world, lay aside even hurts and pains and grab a hold of mercy and grace and kingdom work. And I'm asking God for an anointing of the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon your people. I pray, Lord, this would not be a message we just let go in one ear and out the other. But God, that we would get on our knees and we would cry out to you and we would, we would let this work go deep into our lives. Lord, I pray for Barnabas's men and women to rise up with a spirit of life and encouragement. Lord, I pray right now when the church needs it the most, give us fresh hearts and fresh lives. Lord God, give us passion for you and passion for your work, I pray. God, let the, let the beginning start right here, right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Awesome. What an incredible message and day today as we've gathered together for church. And I hope that your heart has been challenged and encouraged as we've walked through this passage here in the book of Acts from Pastor Steve today. And uh, I know there's many of us as we've been listening to this message, you have just been feeling the Holy Spirit grabbing your heart, encouraging you challenging you, calling you to even some big decisions today. If you've been a follower of Jesus, you may be in a position where you feel the Holy Spirit just pulling you into a deeper place of boldness, taking a stand for what you believe, and maybe even just stepping into deeper places of intimacy and commitment in your relationship with Jesus. Maybe you're watching today and church is a new thing for you. Having a relationship with Jesus, this is a new concept for you. And maybe today you feel the Holy Spirit tugging on your heart that the decision you need to make is to open your heart to Jesus for the first time. Wherever you may be in your faith journey, whatever you sense God leading you into today, we would love to pray with you. We'd love to encourage you and help you figure out what next steps in your journey look like. And so all you have to do is simply text the word response to 97,000. And our pastors and team are standing by right now. We would love to pray with you, encourage you, 
And like I said, just help you figure out how to take some next steps after what God has been speaking to you today. Again, whether it's for the very first time or maybe you've been a follower of Jesus and need to make some important decisions today, wherever you may be, we'd love to help you. All throughout this week, we've got some amazing things that are set aside as ministries and opportunities to help you grow closer and deeper in your relationship with Jesus and make some connections with people here at Eastridge, whether that's being a part of a life group, jumping into our men's and women's Bible study, or maybe even just taking advantage of some of our kids and youth ministry ministries that are available to your family. Uh, We want to make sure that you don't miss out on any of those opportunities. But church, we love you. We're thankful that you've taken time to be with us, and we look forward to connecting with you this week.